Now, the gambling three neutrons. Um, this, uh, this is a um, fitting sort of convention that you can agree with your partner that is to do with um, basically rolling the dice, hence the name the gambling three neutrons. You're essentially taking a, a punt on a, on a risky game contract. And you will often have sub-25 points for this game, but you are essentially chancing your arm that your long suit will provide the trick. So we've all played Neutrons where you, you play a hand and you realise that that six-card suit in whatever that you had gave you a lot of tricks through, sh through sheer length. You can often make extra tricks. You might be in three Neutrons with 26 points, but you make plus two because of the long suit. So the gambling three Neutrons sort of takes that theory and ex sort of extends it to the absolute extremes of that idea in that an exceptionally good and long suit is worth a lot more than it seems on paper. So if you just take a look at the North cards, now I don't want to pretend to you that you're going to pick up these hands <coughs> all the time because you're not. So this is a convention that comes up hardly ever but is incredibly effective when it comes up. Now the North cards, okay, all of your points barring two are all in the diamond suit. So if you somehow managed to get the lead in no trumps, you could rattle off most likely seven diamond tricks if you gain the lead. You can go ace of diamonds, king of diamonds, queen of diamonds, jack of diamonds. If someone has five diamonds and that someone isn't your partner, then yes, the diamonds will not run for seven tricks. But that will be quite unlucky given that there are only six diamonds out there. So it's a fairly realistic thing to think that if you could magically be in no trumps and magically get the lead, you could run seven tricks because that hand is a seven trick hand. So you could argue that that hand would be very good as long as those conditions are met. You are in no trumps and you have the lead at some stage. That's where the gambling part comes in. So you could say that this hand is quite a good no trump hand. Now instinctively you probably want diamonds as trumps. The problem with having diamonds as trumps is that the game is quite difficult. So what the gambling three no trumps looks to do is ignore the fact that you have a long minor and instead try to play in no trumps. Now you will do that throughout the bidding almost always. Whenever you've got a long minor, you'll look to no trumps first. The gambling three no trumps is essentially that theory, but extreme. Now what the gambling three no trumps is, is an opening bid of three no trumps. So instead of opening one no trump or two no trumps, which are balanced hands, you open three no trumps as an agreement with you and your partner that you have some extreme long running minor. What you mustn't have is a good hand as well, because if you have a good hand and a long running minor, you might be able to make a legitimate no gamble three no trumps. So if you have a good hand, which I'll look at in a minute, you can just open one, one diamond or whatever your suit is. If you have a hand where you don't have a high card outside of your suit, now a jack is probably not going to be worth its weight, so I've given you a few jacks there. Um, I would say you want a king or an ace outside of your suit for it to be too good for a gambling three no trumps. So a gambling three no trumps really is, I've got loads of points in a minor and nothing outside. Nothing being no aces or kings really. And when you open three no trumps, you are explaining to your partner that you have a lot, a long source of tricks. And that source of tricks has to be a minor, because if it was a major, you should be bidding it as a major. So with this hand, this is an ideal, fancy that, three no trumps opening hand. Now you are opening three no trumps. Because you think that three no trumps has a reasonable prospect as long as your partner has something. Now your partner isn't forced to have anything at all. They could have the remainder of the 28 points, east-west that is. And therefore east-west could, when you are in three no trumps, could absolutely cut through you. They could lead ace-king-queen, jack of spades, ace-king-queen of hearts. They could, they could take you off like that. And that's really why there's, there's a gambling element to this. What you're doing really is taking a punt that your partner has a little bit of something in the other suits. Something like maybe the ace, king, queen, ten. Something where they can stop the suit running. Then once you're in, you're in and it's over for them. As soon as you gain the lead, assuming there's a diamond here, you're going to lead a diamond and vomit diamonds at them. To the extent they're going to be very squeezed and it's going to be very difficult to defend. There is a chance that that won't work. Your partner might not have any diamonds or your partner might have one suit where they have nothing in it as well. So there are, there are risks attached. But by opening three no trumps, you are explaining to your partner, I have a long running minor and I do not have stoppers in the other suits. So I can't help you in the other suits. So your partner knows, if they are aware that you are gambling. They are aware that you are running the risk of going severely off in this three no trumps. So because you're telling them that, essentially 
you can actually come to an agreement as to what to do when you don't think three year trumps is a good idea, which I'll touch on in a minute. It's very important to note that for this bid to be a gambling style, it has to be your opening bid, or one other style, which I'll talk about in a minute, but it can't be three year trumps after four or five bids. Now you might feel that when you have four or five bids between you, that three no trumps feels like a gamble. Often three no trumps is a bit of a gamble. When I'm referring to a gambling three no trumps, I'm not talking about that dodgy 3N you made last week. I'm talking about extreme gambles like this, with a really long running minor. When I say long running minor, it has to be long running. You don't you can't be missing a card. You can't have ace queen jack to seven or king queen jack to seven, because you are going to lose the lead in your suit then. You can rely on your partner to have a little bit in the side suit. You cannot assume that they have anything good in your suit. So if I remove that card, that is no longer a gambling three no trumps. It might be that the queen of diamonds is falling, or your partner has the queen of diamonds, but you cannot assume that in the bidding. So for a gambling three no trumps, you need absolute solid suit. What about a ten instead of the jack? Mm, it's getting quite close to the margins there. It depends on how your nature. Yeah. Um, expect you would expect you would expect the jack to appear at some stage. That is on the edge. I personally would do it just because they don't come up often enough. Yeah. But that's because I'm a gambler. Um, you, the, the textbook would say it's king queen jack to seven as a minimum, but that's close, isn't it? If you give yourself an extra card, obviously this is getting less and less frequent the more ridiculous we get. You can then be a little bit more. You know, ace king queen to, to eight is certainly a running suit. Again, I don't mean it will run 100% of the time. I can't guarantee that you will have eight tricks in diamonds, but it is a very, very high likelihood once you get the lead that you can go bleh, down the whole suit. So, you know, exercise a bit of logic there, but really you need a sterling suit, not missing one of the top three, certainly not missing one of the top three, because then it won't necessarily run. Okay? Um, I'll go back to the normal one. Obviously, you can appreciate it's not very likely that you get all your points in one suit and a seven-card suit, hence why it's not very frequent. But they are excellent when they come up, because you can kind of make a dodgy three net trumps. Dodgy, I suppose. Now, <coughs> firstly, we'll look at what to do when your partner opens the three net trumps, and then we'll look, look at what the opponents do when they open the three net trumps, so when they open the three net trumps against you. Now, first things first, the reason the three net trumps gamble is a safe prospect is because if your partner absolutely despises the idea of three no trumps because they have five points and two small spades or something and they know that one suit is running, they can always return to your minor. They know you've got a minor because if you had a major, you wouldn't have opened three no trumps. Now you could say, well, which minor do they bid? How do they know which your minor is? I don't think I've ever had it ever where you couldn't tell mainly because you have something in the other minor, i.e. it can't be running, or the length, you'll have five clubs and one diamond, you go, oh, I wonder what their minor is. <laughs> but even in that world, let's say there is a world where you pick up three small, three small, and you genuinely don't know. You can always bid clubs, and if it's clubs, they'll pass, and if it's diamonds, they'll bid diamonds. That is known as a pass or correct bid. You bid something, they either pass it if it's the right thing, or they correct it to the, the correct minor. So if you really, really despise the prospects of three no trumps, you know it's going to fail. Don't forget, you know they've not got anything good in any side suits, so you need a little bit of something in all the other suits. If, for example, you had good things in all but one suit, I suppose it depends how much of a gambler you are then. Um, let's say you had that. Again, I'm assuming East has passed here. There is something they can do, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, when North opens three no trumps, they've got a long running minor. Well, we know that's diamonds because we have good clubs. They can't have running clubs. So our partner rates to have ace, king, queen, jack to seven. If you assume they've got ace, king, queen, jack to seven, you will be right most of the time, again, depending on how much they like to gamble. Um, now, you know that three no trumps will fail on a spade lead. Almost certainly they will be able to take enough tricks to defeat you on a spade lead. It's very, very likely the opponents can take at least four spades and the ace of hearts. It's quite useful knowing that your partner has nothing outside of their suit, so there is no real guesswork to be done. You know partner has got nothing in spades, neither of you, so if the opponents lead a spade, they are very likely to defeat our contract. Do you see that? Because we know that they haven't got anything in spades, not because I can see it on the board, but because their bid has told us they've got loads of diamonds and that's it. Therefore, we know that three no trumps is probably not a good idea. Yes, you could roll the dice in the hope that they for some reason lead a diamond or a club. 
But even if they lead a heart, they can win the ace and then switch to spades. So you are very, very likely to fail, assuming the defenders aren't on your side. Therefore, you need to remove. You need to remove this 3 no trumps to their minor suit. Now, you, the reason this 3 no trumps bid is kind of safe is because you would probably, you should be happy with preempting with that hand anyway. If you were to be dealt that hand before gambling 3 no trumps ever existed, you'd be happy to play in a big number of diamonds, simply because you have a big number of diamonds. So if your partner does bid 4 diamonds, saving you from the 3 no trumps that was going to fail, you're not actually devastated about that. You don't mind, because you were happy, should have been happy, to preempt that level anyway. Yes, you have seven, so strictly speaking, seven means you want to be at the three level. But the quality of the suit, you're probably happy with the four level. So you've not really lost anything, because your partner, <coughs> if they think it's a bad idea, will take you back to the safe haven that they know is not necessarily a bad idea. Here you will see four diamonds is one, two, three losers. A club, a heart and a spade. We might even make gain if the club press works. So four diamonds is a very safe contract. Three no trumps is not. So when you're responding to this gambling three no trumps, they have almost written their hand down on a piece of paper for you. They've got a long minor. You almost always, if not always, know which one it is. And they don't have anything in the side suits. So you can't rely on them for any stoppers. So in this instance, we know, oh dear, spades are going to kill us. Let's remove it to their minor. In this case, diamonds. Now if I make it through some sheer miracle, we don't know which minor it is. Again, this will happen very, very infrequently that you don't know. You can just bid clubs, and if it's clubs, they'll pass. And if it's diamonds, they'll bid four diamonds. Again, you will find the safe contract. The safe contract here is a big number of a minor. If you like, you're using a double-edged sword. This is both a potentially making contract and also a preemptive bid, all in one, which is why it's so effective. Because if your partner has goodies, they'll have a go at 3N. If your partner does not have goodies, they'll take you back to your minor. So you've essentially done an effective preempt of the minor. Do you see? So it's like two ways. Yes, Paul. Why don't you just bid four clubs anyway? You could always bid four clubs, but if you know, it means it's better to leave them less room if you can. If you know it's diamonds, it's better to do four diamonds to stop them doubling four clubs for takeout or whatever it might be. Which is better as the open hand then, do you think? It's probably better to try and get this hand on the dummy, yeah. because this hand is very well described in the bidding, or yeah. again, almost written down on the sheet of paper. Yeah. So if you can, let's say we knew it was clubs like hand, uh, diamonds like hand previous, if you bid four diamonds, this hand is then going to be on the dummy, which is another sort of subtle advantage to that, in that their described hand is going to be on the dummy, which is quite useful. Um, you will find that if you have a rubbish hand and your partner has a rubbish hand, which they do for their gambling three neutrons, the opponents will be likely to try and get in the bidding. They'll find it awkward at the level at which they've got to do so. They often have majors and points, and they can't quite get into the bidding enough to know where the fit is and where the points, where they should be playing, essentially. Um, as I say, you can always, if you're unsure, bid four clubs, and that, that's alertable because it's not necessarily a natural bid that's pass or correct. You almost always will have <coughs> something like that, and then you know. All you need is one card in the suit, in one of the miners, and you know. Either your partner has took an outrageous gamble on their ace-king to seven clubs, or their suit is diamonds, which is far more likely. 